Welcome to the channel of NZ Justice 111. This is episode 3 in the series, The Names of Who Corrupt New Zealand and What They Don't Want You to Know. We ended episode 2 with Lisa being persuaded by Senior Sergeant to take him back, while he, Christopher Lynch, Lisa's professional trustee, and Lisa's former barrister, Cunning Warren Simpson, hid the fact from Lisa and her mother that the prenup that protected Lisa's trust from Senior Sergeant was missing. Unfortunately for Lisa and her mother, the dishonest hiding from them that the prenup was missing was only one cog in this utter wheel of deception that saw this honest family lose their entire life savings. Without further delay, here we go. After Senior Sergeant successfully convinced Lisa to take him back, she decided to sell her tenancy management company and focus full-time on property development. Shortly after, Lisa also decided to sell her trust property and buy another two and a half acres in the country so her trust could build yet another brand new home. As Lisa's trust held a large amount of equity, she approached her trust bank and requested a small short-term loan of 20000 to prepare her trust property for sale. Senior Sergeant on learning this offered to lend Lisa the 20000 and even offered to meet the weekly repayments to the bank for the loan because Lisa had been property managing for free Senior Sergeant's home he had rented out to tenants. All Senior Sergeant asked was that Lisa repay him back once her trust property had sold. Don't be fooled by this alleged kind gesture from Senior Sergeant. You will see why later on. In 2005, Lisa sold her family trust property for $1.3 million. As proof of this, here is a screenshot of the sales agreement. The names of Lisa's trust and the buyers have been blocked out for privacy reasons. However, you can clearly see Christopher Lynch's name appears in the vendor's line, as he was one of the trustees for Lisa's trust. The sale proceeds from Lisa's trust property after the bank was repaid was just over $700,000, with Lisa's trust purchasing a new vehicle and depositing the remaining balance in the bank. Here is a screenshot of one of Lisa's trust bank statements showing the balance of just over $659,000. Lisa's trust then used $530,000 of this money and purchased another two and a half acres of land where her trust would build a new home. Here is a screenshot of the purchase agreement. Again, the identities of Lisa's trust name and other private details have been blocked out. But as you can clearly see, Christopher Lynch's name as one of the trustees for Lisa's trust appears in the purchases line. The purchase price of $530,000 is confirmed by the Green Arrow, as well as confirming cash was paid by Lisa's Trust to purchase the beer land. Here is a photo of the actual house Lisa's family trust built on the land, which Lisa believed was protected by the prenup. And here is a photo of the actual house Senior Sergeant owned that was also protected by the prenup. This image has been taken from Google Maps. One only needs to see these two houses to realise who would greatly financially benefit under a property relationship claim if the prenup was to remain permanently lost. In June of 2005, after Lisa had sold her trust property and while she was organising the building of a new home on the land her trust had just purchased, Lisa and her son from her previous relationship, senior sergeant and the couple's young daughter, who had just turned two, moved into rental accommodation. Soon after moving in, Senior Sergeant offered to give Lisa a joint card on his FPOS account that belonged to the same bank as Lisa's family trust accounts. The couple agreed to deposit equal amounts of money each week into the Senior Sergeant's FPOS account to cover the majority of the general living expenses for the family. Senior Sergeant also kindly offered to pay the fortnightly rental payments for the home the family was renting. Soon after this first rental payment was made by Senior Sergeant, he gave Lisa the joint card connected to his FPOS account. A short while after, Lisa went onto the computer and, as per normal, logged into her trust's online banking facility, where she saw Senior Sergeant, without her consent, had managed to have four of his accounts show up alongside Lisa's family trust bank accounts. Before Lisa could contact her bank to ask why this had happened, Senior Sergeant stepped in and persuaded Lisa to leave his four accounts joined to Lisa's trust banking facility. 
Lisa being pregnant with the couple's second child, a son, and trusting senior sergeant agreed to allow his accounts to remain on her trust's online banking facility on senior sergeant's excuse that he did not have internet banking for his own accounts and leaving his accounts on Lisa's family trust internet banking would make it easier for him to keep track of what he is paying towards the family's living expenses. Unfortunately, Lisa fell for this cunning excuse and many more like it and gave Senior Sergeant her internet number and password to her trust banking facility. This was a fatal mistake made by Lisa. As you watch what happens next, keep in mind this cunning, corrupt individual is still employed by the New Zealand Police and is still being criminally protected by, but certainly not limited to, Superintendent Anna Jackson. Here we go. On the 10th of October 2005, Lisa's family trust repaid Senior Sergeant his loan of $20,000 that he had advanced to Lisa's trust to prepare her trust property for sale. This repayment was broken down into two payments made the same day at Senior Sergeant's request. Here is a screenshot of Senior Sergeant's bank statement for his account suffix 00. On the statement, you will see $2,000 coming from Lisa's family trust as part of Senior Sergeant's loan repayment. You will also see Senior Sergeant's police salary being credited to this account, as well as the fortnightly rental payments for the family coming out. This is the account Senior Sergeant gave Lisa a joint card to. It is also one of the accounts that Senior Sergeant cunningly persuaded Lisa to remain joined to her trust's online banking facility. And here is a screenshot of Senior Sergeant's bank statement for his account a suffix 02, where you can see 18000 coming from Lisa's trust to complete the repayment of Senior Sergeant's $20,000 loan. On the statement, you can also see a $5 establishment fee being charged to this account on the 12th of October to set up a new automatic payment for the family's rental payments to come out of the $18,000 with the first payment occurring on the 20th of October. This replaced the automatic payment on Senior Sergeant Suffolk's 00 account where his police salary was covering the family's rent. Senior Sergeant ensured his Suffolk 02 account was also joined to Lisa's Family Trust banking facility but she did not hold an FBOS card to access this account. Other bank statements for Senior Sergeant's O2 account confirms his further spending of the 18000 via internet banking, his personal checks and FBOS transactions. On the 21st of December 2005, only eight weeks after Lisa's trust repaid Senior Sergeant his loan and he started to spend the money, he, behind Lisa's back, secretly emailed Barrister Christopher Lynch and falsely accused Lisa of spending his $20,000 loan repayment on the family's living expenses. Lisa was also despicably accused of financially having to rely on Senior Sergeant after she had sold her tenancy management company. Here is a screenshot of the part in Senior Sergeant's email to Lisa's professional trustee, Barrister Christopher Lynch, where Senior Sergeant is recording gross lies about Lisa behind her back. Notice Senior Sergeant's email cunningly records in inverted commas OUR when referring to the new land Lisa's Trust had just purchased. Senior Sergeant later went on to go and commit countless acts of dishonesty, deception and perjury against Lisa and her mother during a High Court trial. One despicable act of Senior Sergeant's was to falsely claim that Lisa had persuaded him to allow his accounts to be joined to her trust's internet banking facility and that Lisa, behind Senior Sergeant's back, had deposited his $20,000 loan repayment into his account and spent it all without his knowledge using her trust's online banking facility. NZ Justice 111 looks forward to releasing the episode that will by unequivocal evidence, expose to you exactly what went on in this High Court trial and will pull apart the insidious judgment delivered against Lisa and her mother by the grossly incompetent and corrupt judge, John Presley. This now ends episode three in this series. If you have enjoyed this video, please click on the like button, make a comment, or simply subscribe to this channel. If you wish to be on NZ Justice 111's confidential email list, which alerts you every time a new video is released, just email ncjustice111 at gmail.com. Until next time, keep safe.